is not just a programming language, it is a protocol. Most high-level languages have some form of foreign function interface that let the programmer call a library that exposes a C function. In particular, this is true for most common Lisp implementation. I talk about implementation because this is not part of the common Lisp standard. From the point of view of Lisp, the underlying system doesn't exist, even though sometimes it's useful being able to talk with it. The CFFI package is the de facto way of using FFI in common Lisp. It unifies all the standard common Lisp implementation, like SBCL, CCL, ECL, and so on. In particular, we will pay attention to SBCL, but the interface is the same. To be able to call a code that exposes a C function from an higher level language, we need a binding. That is, some glue code that tells the high level language how to pass data to the C function and how to read it. If you have ever done it in some other languages, like the Java Native Interface in Java, you may know that you have to write some glue code in C. The idea is that Java provides an SDK for C that allows you to manually manage a Java object. This way you have enough control to provide data to the C function. In Common Lisp, we write the binding in Common Lisp directly. So, the first step is learn how to deal with G memory from Lisp. In C, we don't have a garbage collector, so every time we allocate some memory on heap, we have to remember that we have to free it. The same holds for CFFI. We have the function foreign alloc, which takes a parameter and returns a pointer to the memory in which we can read and write. A pointer is basically the address of a memory location. I create a new package in which I load CFFI. The first step is to understand how to manage memory, how to allocate it, how to free it, and how to read and write. The easiest way to allocate memory is using foreign alloc. We can see that the first parameter is type, which can be any of the standard type in C, like int, unsigned int, car, and so on. For example, we want to allocate an integer. From the type, CFFI understand directly how many memory he has to allocate. When we have finished using a memory location, we have to free it using foreign free. Using foreign type size, we can understand how much memory is required for a specific type. For example, on this system, an int takes 4 bytes. Keeping track of dynamic memory in C is difficult, but in a language with signals, it's even more. The risk is to allocate memory at the beginning of the function and free it at the end, but in the middle, an exception is raised. The solution is to use with foreign pointer, or its wrapper with foreign object, which does a non-bind protect. That is, it catches the exception and frees the memory. We can see this inside the code. At the beginning, there is a foreign alloc, then the body of the function is executed inside an unwind protect. In the end, everything is freed. It's interesting that uh, the code for SPCL tries to understand if the size is constant, and in this case, it tries to allocate on the stack. Now we've seen how to allocate some memory. The next step is being able to read and write inside that memory location. Let's allocate some memory again. We can refer to a memory location using memRF. Pointer don't carry type information, so we have to specify which type we are reading and writing every time we access a pointer. We have never written any data inside this memory location, so reading it now is undefined behavior. This is some value that was present in memory when we allocate it. Before reading, we have to write it, for example using setf. Now, if we read it again, we can see that we found exactly the same value. We have to be consistent when we allocate, read and write data. For example, the type float has the same size as an int. But it does not make sense in general to write an int and read a float. Even though 
if we don't pay attention we could do that we can see that no error is raised even though the value does not make any sense so we've seen how to allocate some memory how to read and write inside that memory location and how to free it after that i free a memory location i must not write it again if i need some more memory i have to allocate it again foreign alloc also take account parameter that specify how many contiguous memory location i need it basically let us allocate some array for example this is the way in which we can allocate an array of 10 elements let's store the address in a variable we can access each cell using memref which takes as an optional parameter an index for example we are modifying the third cell index r based 0 0 1 2 we have always to specify the type let's look also at an example on how to use with foreign object which as we've seen before links the lifetime of an object to the scope of a variable for this we can take an example from the official documentation we can see that we are declaring an array of 10 elements at the beginning then inside the scope of this variable we iterate over each element and we assign it a random value then we iterate again and we show all the values in the end the object will be freed even though we don't have to do it manually dealing with c is always difficult but cffi is a powerful tool there are a lot of well-known and tested library that you can use inside your list program for today this is all the next step is to try to actually link a library let me know in the comments if you like the video leave a like and subscribe